oh, I don't want to talk too much about that. But having Evan in this world is amazing. It was something that we talked a lot about on very early on. And I'm so glad we were able to do it, that we were able to make that work. Long lost bro get to squeeze his stinking sister to death or what? She recast Pietro? We're on a cliffhanger right now. Can you talk to me about the significance of Agatha's talk of chaos magic, calling Wanda the Scarlet Witch? That makes you the Scarlet Witch. Like, what is the significance of this? What can you tell us? Well, Wanda's had power for a long time, but it's never been defined. And there is magic in the MCU, but we haven't talked about witches before. Um, and so episode eight really is about talking about how there are witches in this world. Agatha's one of them, and she is here to sort of help uh, Wanda figure out who she really is. And so episode eight was a lot about looking at Wanda's past, but it's also a lot about destiny and about what's to come. Who's been messing up everything? It's been Agatha all along. We have to talk about Agatha all along because I, I did not expect there to be a certified bop in this show. She's insidious. <laughs> well, hats off to the Lopez's because yes. they're geniuses. Um, and hats off to Catherine Nahan for singing the heck out of it, along with some amazing backup singers and doing so well that she managed to overtake Bieber and The Weeknd on the iTunes charts, which made me so happy. Um, but it, it was a blast to put that together. I mean, the we were going along and in every era, we knew we would have an Agatha all along moment. And so there was a lot of discussion about what those moments would be and crafting them through storyboards and sort of figuring it out. And then we would be shooting something in the fifties and have to stop and kind of do that Agatha all along moment, which would mean turning to a much more cinematic style, breaking what we were doing and kind of having fun with Catherine Hahn for 45 minutes to an hour for that section. And I loved every time we did that. It was always fun. We were always coming up with new ideas. Um, I think my favorite was coming up with the picnic right before we did that, where we pulled back from Pietro and she's, you know, there's Han having fun with the grapes and the wine. And um, I, the poor prop guy, Elliot, had to make that in like five minutes because he had no warning. And I killed Sparky too. <laughs> Those things were really fun and, and um, and help support, I think, was what a very catchy tune. Very catchy tune. That's like one of the links that people have kind of been making the whole, they're like, is Agnes Agatha? Like, could this be her? What was the earliest tell, do you think, that Agnes was Agatha? Like, was there something in episode one that people might have missed or something like that? Well, you know, we, we've had this cameo there, the brooch, uh, pretty much the whole time. When you announce a character, but you call her just the nosy neighbor and it's Katherine Hahn, you're basically inviting uh, uh, the comic fans to go on a deep dive and see what they can figure out. So speculation has run rampant around uh, her role for a long time. So we knew that we would eventually be making this big reveal. And for some, they might be slightly ahead of it. And that's okay, as long as the reveal is a whole lot of fun, which I think the Lopez's um, delivered um, big time. Um, and for those of, of us who are not maybe as familiar with that character or haven't gone in the deep dive into the comic books, there's hopefully that Kaiser Soze moment there as well, where you're surprised. And there's some beautiful scenes, I think, in, in episode six, the one especially between Vision and Agnes over at the edge of town where, where maybe those who thought they were on the Agatha train were thrown off a little bit um, by what they saw there. Uh, so we did our best to kind of continue with some red herrings and misdirection along the way towards that big reveal. It worked. Uh, so we find out that Agatha was the one that like formed like the Evan Peters version of Pietro. She calls him Pietro, which I love. I got close with fake Pietro, Pietro. Um, can we talk about this conversation of bringing Evan Peters into the show in this form? Yeah, I mean, she, Agatha does talk about how she was manipulating him and controlling his, uh, you know, pulling the strings. Uh, where that goes, you know, there's still one episode to go. I don't want to talk too much about that. But having Evan in this world is amazing. It was something that we talked a lot about on very early on. And I'm so glad we were able to do it, that we were able to make that work. Um, he's very special, and I think his work in the show is fantastic. Um, much like all the other actors, he's capable of so many different tones and styles. And I love, uh, I love Uncle Pietro. Uncle P, Uncle P is great. 
Oh, so good. So there's there's potentially more to come with like what what's going on there with the Evan Peters Pietro thing. Yeah, potentially. Okay. Was there ever any talk of bringing Aaron Taylor Johnson into the mix? Lots of conversations were had. Um, I think this question was asked of Kevin Feige at, uh, last week, and I, you know I, that was definitely something that was discussed early on. But eventually, um, uh, the decision was made to to not go down that way. Mm -hmm. um, at least, you know. Um, yeah. So there's a very, there's like a lot of the fan theories. They're going rampant. I don't know how much you're reading them, but the, I just saw a really convincing one about the significance of the flowers in front of the houses. Are fans onto something with that? You know, I have to say, I'm so taken by the level of engagement with the fans. I, we built this show with so much love and passion and attention to detail, and that we're seeing it come back to us with so much love and passion from the fans. And we share these memes and TikTok videos and everything that's coming out uh, mm -hmm. among the cast and crew. And we're just so um, kind of blown away by the, the, the level of engagement and also the, the amazing creative spirit that's out there too. Um, I can't speak about anything too, in too much detail, except just to say um, thank you for all the crazy, amazing stuff that you guys are coming up with. I was gonna say, not a no. <laughs> so we see uh, Wanda has this like vision with the Mind Stone, vision pun intended, uh, and we see the fully formed like Scarlet Witch look and it's immaculate. Can you explain what's happening here? Like I said before, I mean, episode eight is a really interesting episode because it is about going into Wanda's past. So it is about exploring the grief, the loss, the trauma. It's also about exploring love, like, you know, the deep love that she has for Vision, for her, her parents, for her brother. Um, all of that is in that episode as well. But what's past is prologue, right? There mm -hmm. are also moments of, of, of destiny implied, that all of this is a journey that she's been on that's been leading to something. When that Mind Stone comes to her, it's coming to her for a reason. You've had a lot of debuts and reveals in this show, a lot of responsibility of debuting characters. We see Monica Rambeau and like kind of how she gets her powers. Which one felt like the biggest responsibility? They were all equally big. Um, I, I think Tiana Paris has just crushed it. And her story is a parallel story with Wanda's. She's, she's dealing with the loss of her mother. She's coming back into a very sort of disoriented new world where she's returned from being gone. Um, she's trying to put the pieces of her life back together. And so those stories are absolutely designed to be parallel stories. And it's why those two characters feel some sort of affinity uh, for each other. And it's why perhaps Wanda brings um, Monica into the world to begin with. <laughs> creating um, sort of the new version of Monica when she moves through that hex was a really uh, exciting moment for us, um, for all of us. Um, Tiana just crushes it and she had to crush it again and again and again in a million different outfits as we put that together. Um, this idea that she was, you know, being taken apart uh, and remade inside this hex, this world, was a great moment for us, I think, really fun visually, but they've all been really fun. I mean, even just opening the door on, on Uncle P at the end of episode five, you know, as simple as that is, didn't didn't involve any crazy visual effects. It's still one of my favorite shots. Who's a popsicle? 